Broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council Meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin, Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council Meetings, City Committee Meetings, Meeting Agendas, and other documents via the City website, www.ninagov.org. NENA residents can express their opinions about city issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website, www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Nina Common Council for Wednesday, July 17, 2019. <clears throat> the first item of business would be the roll call. Members will sign in as your name is called by the clerk, please. Alderman Boyette. Bates. Here. Lang. Here. Lendrum. Erickson. Here. Bellman. Here. Steele. Here. Coons. Stevenson? Here. There is a quorum present. Um, for the record, uh, the members that uh, are not here are all excused. Um, we have some members with some health issues going on and some family health issues going on. And uh, uh, Alderman Coons uh, had surgery recently, so I'll keep... Keep him in our thoughts uh, and prayers, everybody, uh, because he's undergoing some um, serious treatments and that. So, but he's looking forward to getting back here. He told me. So, uh, quite frank, I'm surprised he's not here because he he really wanted to be here. I guess is what Alan <laughs> said, but uh, it's way too early. So, uh, so those three members will be uh, excused for tonight's meeting. So there is a quorum present. Uh, next item of business. That right after. We'll do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. That'll be led by uh, Alderman Stevenson. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. All righty. So, Patty has asked that uh, I'm going to report that the Committee of the Whole met tonight at 6 p.m. and accepted the 2018 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Um, this is the communication to those charged with the governments and management and report to the City Council and place them on file. So that will be council record. Reference. Um, item number... Right, that got taken off. So item number four is a public hearing. A public hearing to consider a special use permit request by the Expert Automotive LLC to establish a tow service and auto repair business on property located at 101 North Lake Street in Nina. For reference for folks, that's the old Wayne's Auto, corner of Main and Lake. So I will open up that public hearing. Um, if anyone's here would like to discuss anything with regards to that uh, special use permit. Sit up. Gentlemen, you got anything you want to add from the Planning Commission? Not really? Okay, good. If you do, think something, or there might be a question or two, but thank you for coming. Anyone else? Uh, anyone want to? Doesn't appear to, so we will close the public hearing. On that, and we will move to item number five, which is the plan commission report pertaining to the public hearing. Alderman Lang. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting for the plan commission meeting of July 9th. The minutes can be found on the city website. The commission recommends council approve a special use permit for a tow service and auto repair business located at 101 North Lake Street, subject to the following conditions. 
Submit a landscape plan indicating the type, location, and size of each planting within the landscape strip. A minimum of one shade tree and six shrubs is required for each 40 linear feet of frontage, excluding driveway openings. 100 feet on Lake Street equals three shade trees to 18 shrubs. 200 feet on Main Street equals five shade trees to 30 shrubs. Install a 10-foot wide landscape strip along the Main Street and Lake Street frontages. Landscape must be installed within 18 months after approval or a later time if granted by the plan commission. Submit detail on proposed fence showing that the fence will be site tight. Tow trucks must be stored behind the fence when not in use. Storage of vehicles is limited to areas that are hard surfaced, for example, asphalt. The gravel area along the east property line is not a permitted storage or parking area. Remove off-premise signs, billboards, and a sign permit is required for all exterior building or freestanding signage. And I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Lang. Second. Seconded by Alderman Bates. Uh, I will open up to questions. I will ask, there was one request for the former owner to bring in the billboard contract that been done? What was the outcome of that? Brand? Uh, the plan commission did ask for the, the contract. Um, we did look at it. We want to keep the condition as is with the removal of the billboards at this time. And say that again? We want to keep the condition that's on the uh, special use permit um, approval to remove the billboards um, as it is currently on the, the request. So that we think there's language How in the... How can you do that when there's a contract? We think there's language in the contract that, um, that with that condition on there, the billboard can be, be removed and the contract can be broken. Already, uh, I can add. I highly doubt it, Mayor. My experiences with uh, billboard companies. But, uh, look at this. I'm going to have this city attorney answer the question first, then I'll move on. To the yeah, I did. There are two provisions in the contract specifically um, that reference existing ordinances, zoning code, or other um, conditions placed upon the property which wouldn't allow the sign to be there. And reviewing it, I think there are two, um, two clauses in the contract that would allow this, these um, conditions to be put in place. And for with So if the billboard company fight, there's no way we're going to close this business down because they don't comply because we get into an argument with the sign company. Correct. Again, the contract's between the property owner and the sign company, not between the city and the sign company. So ultimately, it's, it's the property owner who signed the contract. They're going to have to deal with the sign company and the contract. Our requirement as part of this use is for those billboards to be removed. Director Hayes. Yeah, I was just going to add, we're, we're continuing to evaluate the options. Um, I'm not convinced that we have thoroughly evaluated this yet at this point. As Brad mentioned, we are recommending uh, the continuation of the conditions as they were recommended out of commission. If for some reason it's determined later that because of ex extenuating circumstances, existing contracts, whatever else may be out there, we're unable to do that, then we're unable to do it. But at this point, it's not... It, we're not recommending removal of those conditions because we have yet to thoroughly explore that opportunity. Okay. I mean, you're, you're going to put in the, you're going to put in the permit that they have to remove the off-premise signs, the billboards, and that might not be a possibility. That's correct. <laughs> the other option is that it could happen at some point in the future at the termination of a lease, as an example. This is our only opportunity to evaluate those billboards and, and have any leverage whatsoever to try and get them removed. So I would not want to be make a premature decision and remove that condition from the special use request. Well, then, well, then the leasee of the property is taking some risk because we could 
through no fault of theirs, we could yank their special use future council, not this one, could yank their special use permit. I don't know that they could do that. I think we would have to bring back the report that we, we had applied a condition that can't be met. If the if a building code changed, if something changed in the in the in the process of any special use permit, I think a council would have be difficult for them to remove something that was or or require the removal of a special use permit for something that was beyond the control of the property owner. Okay. Anyone else? Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. Um, how do things stand in the? Was it? Were they going to try and sell the land, or is it going to be leased by this towing company? Or The intent, from my understanding, is to lease. Um, I, th I think ideally they'd like to purchase, but there's some underlying environmental issues that are continuing to be monitored, and so until that's figured out, they're going to lease it. Okay, so as it stands now, that if we do say that this has to happen with the uh, removal of the signs, nothing, they can't come back and say, well, we can't do it, please give it to us anyway. It's pretty much, if you tried to take that out, it would come back to council before you could do that. Is that correct? Yeah, ultimately, we want to work with them. Um, at this point, you know, we have looked at the contracts. Ultimately, you know, it's the property owner who isn't here has to work with the sign company to figure out how to get those removed. And, you know, we'll do what we can on our end to help. Ultimately, if that's impossible to do or, or it's, it's unreasonable to do, uh, we'll have to reevaluate that in community development and potentially bring it back as a amendment to the special use to remove that condition. So the amendment would have to come back to court. Yeah. Thank you. Potentially, yep. Other comments or questions? Alderman Stevenson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just so I get all my ducks in a row here, the, if I, if, tell me where, correct me where I'm mistaken. Current owner is Wayne Speaks, and he has a, contractual obligation with a sign company that requires us to issue a special use permit or a special use permit is issued for the what well, is there a special use permit granted for the property or when <clears throat> mr speaks ran his his repair shop there? no okay so the, spe the special use permit is new to this function use that's correct we're attempting to leverage the special use permit <laughs> through the lease the pressure of the owner who has a contractual obligation with the sign company. Not to the lesser, to the owner. Okay, but who's that? Who's requesting a special use permit? The owner. Special use permit is being requested by Mr. Speak, not by the new. In essence, yeah. I mean, I the thought it's being uses. requested by Expert Auto. On behalf of the owner of the property, which is Wayne. So the special use is for the property. The special use is, it runs sort of with the land and the use of the land. So that's the purpose of the special use. Wayne Auto began in 1987 as a auto repair business. The new use is a towing business. Therefore, that towing business is a change in use and towing businesses in the C1 district are a special use permit. Okay, so, so he, Mr. Speaks is attempting to utilize his property through a lease arrangement mm -hmm. and we're attempting to leverage that request by working to get rid of the signs. Our, our request is to utilize this request to leverage to get rid of the signs. That's correct. To make the the property consistent with what is zoned in that property now. The right. signs were placed before. So let's fast forward. I don't see anything in the minutes that reference the amount of time other than 18 months that was for landscaping. Correct. There is no time limit on the removal of billboards. Okay, so six months from now, a year from now, when are we going to ask, when are we going to attempt to address with Mr. Speaks our attempted leverage? The intent is, is if this special use permit is approved, we're going to do that immediately. We're going to work with the property owner to work with him with the uh, sign company to get those signs removed. So at this point, we don't know what the reaction from the sign company is gonna be in their interpretation of their contract. Um, based on our interpretation of the contract, we feel that there's language in there um, and the condition in the special use gives us the leverage to have those signs removed. 
Director Hayes? I just want to clarify, my understanding of the lease is that if, if not for the environmental conditions on the property, this would be a property sale. However, there's underlying environmental issues that are still being explored. That's why it went from a sale to a lease. So that, it, it, just so we're clear, wasn't originally planned to be a long-term lease between the owner and the tenant. It was planned to be a sale, but because of the environmental conditions, it has turned into a lease. My understanding is, and Brad, you can correct me if I'm wrong, or if you think differently, but if those environmental issues are dealt with and, and dealt with effectively, we may very likely be looking at a land sale. I, I don't know if that changes anything for your top, but I wanted you yeah, to be well, aware of that. Yeah, well, a couple things. My, my, I have a couple of reactions. The reaction is, depending on the severity and the depth and breadth of the environmental, um, I hate to use the word cleanup, but the work needed to be done to get rid of the environmental stuff. The, the, if we grant the special use permit and the new tenants are functioning, the owner is getting his lease payments. There's going to be less, there's potentially less inertia to clean the property. That's one situation. The other situation is we grant the special use permit without attempting to leverage the sign, the, the, the sign contract. I think we've lost leverage because these guys are going to be in business running if it's two weeks from now, a year and a half from now, five years from now. If they're still running there, also we're now we're going to say, well, you've had X number of time to deal with this contractual obligation with a sign company. Now we're going to, we're going to invoke our requirement to withdraw the special use permit. And, and then they become the innocent victim because they, they're running a, hopefully, a successful business. And we still have the signs which we want to get taken down. And the current owner of the property is receiving le lease payments from the tenants and lease payments from the sign company. Right? Victor Hayes. If I could, then if I could offer a solution, I would suggest keeping the conditions as is, with the caveat that the council be re that a report come back within six months as to what the what have we determined in terms of the lease and the removal of the billboards. Yeah, well, we asked for that for tonight, and we didn't get it. We're not done. Then, I mean, it, it, we we've just received the lease copies of the lease late last week. No, I don't, well, was it this yesterday. Week? Yesterday, I'm sorry, yesterday. So we haven't had time to evaluate it. Thoroughly. I think it's my position is premature to grant the special use permit. If if I could, then you are putting, well, you you can do that. You're you're putting the business and their operations and their ability to move forward on hold while we're doing our work. I, have, I don't want to debate with Chris, but but if we, but I respond, if we have made the, the landowner aware of our desire to remove the signage, which requires some contractual interface with him, and we haven't gotten that, what's the likelihood we're going to get it now once he gets the special? Uh, the attorney, Van. Can I, I just want to say, I don't know that we can negotiate or he can negotiate, the owner can negotiate with Lamar without... Um, having the teeth of the this um, zoning requirement. So the fact that we issue a special use permit that requires a signage to be removed gives him additional evidence. Correct. To, yeah, but that should have been done prior to these guys being stuck in the middle. <laughs> I think. <clears throat> Other questions? Comments? Alderman Bates? Thank you, Mayor. Um, so if I get this correctly, because it's a towing company, it started this whole thing, because otherwise if Mr. Speaks had been able to sell it to anybody else and they would have accepted the signs, we would have had nothing to do with it. Yeah, if a, a, a business went into here that was a either a auto repair, which is the current use, or another permitted use, we wouldn't have had this ability to add the other conditions to get the site cleaned up. Okay, and so the way it is worded now, the special use does not become um, active until we get some sort of either the, the signs come down or there's a confirmation that they will come down at a particular point. 
I would say that the special use is active if it's approved immediately. I think what we'll do is continue to work on getting those conditions, the landscape plan submitted. And this is typical with any special use we've done is we don't wait until those things are necessarily delivered or acted upon. Um, you know, for example, this landscape plan may take some time to, to put together. And I don't mind that, mm. you know, the landscape thing, that's something that, you know, we can force them to do. But if they can't take down the signs because of the contract cannot be broken, I don't want, as President Stevenson said, I don't want a business starting yeah. up there with the idea that, oh, it'll be fine. And if we can't do it, then we're just, we've shot ourselves. And I think Chris, uh, Director Hayes made a good point. I think if, if it's something that we can continue to work with the landowner on in, in regards to the sign and the contract and bring back a solution within six months to council, uh, which may require an amendment to the special use condition, or at that point, maybe we have better clarity as far as whether the signs can or can't be removed. So we can't just, instead of a, um, a condition, a contingency, that it's contingent upon we get this. I don't want them starting if we find out that it's not, you know, it's possible, it's not possible. I would rather them wait until, you know, we have some confirmation as opposed to just it's in words. I mean, then, then that's really up to the, the property owner, which the property owner is not here. And, I, you know, like Director Hayes said, you're kind of putting a business in hiatus until that is resolved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I understand. I, guess, I may. Uh, I, I think, Chris, uh, we, we got to put a timeline on because you just can't leave it hanging out there forever. I mean, I brought this up because it just doesn't seem fair to the people who want to start this business. Um, you're kind of left hanging. So, you know, put a deadline on it or something, um, a timeline on it. Um, I think they're anxious to get going, they're anxious to take this over and get it going. So, um, you know, if you have a deadline, you'll have, I mean, I applaud you for trying to get rid of the, the billboards. This is your opportunity, I guess, to at least look at it. My personal feeling is the sign companies employ a lot of lawyers to do just the opposite because they have a lot of money invested across the state of Wisconsin in those signs. And so it's a very difficult venture to try and get rid of them, but maybe maybe we can find a way. We have a very good <laughs> attorneys too. Uh, so, but um, I'm not an attorney. Uh, but um, at least put a timeline on this so that, you know, at some point they, they have some certainty that they know that, you know, a future council, but they might not feel the same way we do. And they might say, oh, we wanted them billboards down. And they're not. So we're going to yank that permit. Not that it's ever going to happen, but I would just like to see some certainty. Uh, Alderman Steele. Um, two, two questions. Is there a uh, an end point to the contract with the sign company? Where, where and does the city, and then does the city have any existing ordinances that could prevent the property owner from renewing that contract with Lamar? Yes, the contract has an end of 2025, but allows the um, lessee, in this case Lamar, to um, go to a year-to-year -year lease. Um, so that's the answer to that question. Yes, current zoning ordinance does not allow a new sign. They can't repair the sign. They can only do like essentially cosmetic upkeep. Um, but they can't like add brackets. They can't do that. Anything like that, even if it stayed as it currently is, would be a violation. Um, so does the lease have an end? Yes, in 2025 um, and a year to year. And I would just like to also add that a contract can be broken at any time. It's just the matter of what the damages would be. And that's something between Lamar and the owner. Lauren Bates, are you back in the system? Yeah. Third time? Go ahead. I am. Okay. Uh, well, this is following up on your deadline statement. When we give somebody a deadline, if you don't have any sort of recourse after it, it's not a deadline. So I'm just wondering, as a recourse, can you pull a special use permit after it's been issued? Because I know with the city attorney, if we're taking away someone's liquor license, we have to go through all sorts of legal you know, mediation, all this other stuff to get that pulled. Can you pull a special use permit if contingencies or... Um, Conditions are not followed. Yes, we can. Um, that isn't what our intent would be in this case. I wouldn't but, either, yeah. but okay. 
Any other comments, questions, issue? How many, uh, I just ask, how many employees are you going to employ in, our, in the community, your operation? All right, thank you. Um, anyone else? All right, seeing none, there is a motion. I leave it like it is. So, uh, motion is uh, as read by Alderman Lang. All in favor of the motion? Can I speak? Pardon me? Can I speak? Sure. Up to Alderman you. Stevenson. You can, you can check That's in. fine. I haven't called for the vote yet. So, so Chris, what would I, to, to provide some structure to the operation, if we wanted to put a, a deadline of six months, a year, year and a half, um, it's hard for us to answer because we haven't had time to review the contract. <laughs> but we don't know what, you know, what, they're reviewable. When do we want to? If do we try to? Do we strategize? I mean, there's no. There doesn't appear to be any strategy against the contract. So we think we know we have a contract. We want to try to leverage it, but we don't know what the rules of engagement. Well, it's just so I'm clear. It's not our contract. It's yeah. the contract oh. between the owner and the billboard company. Um, we have asked to see a copy of it. I'm not sure that it can go beyond our city attorney um, to evaluate the ability to remove the billboards. You know, what's the length of the lease and all that. As the mayor mentioned, these, these leases are fairly uh, tight and on the surface and even after some reviews seem somewhat difficult. Um, I'm of the opinion that we haven't turned over every rock to see what might be out there or what opportunity could present itself. As an example, I mentioned if the property sells versus if it continues as a lease, does that provide a different opportunity? And therefore, can we make it a condition that if the property sells at that time, the billboards could be removed? We're not sure of that yet. Um, but I believe six months is, I think we at the staff level, and Adam could add in on this, or Brad, but I suspect six months is perhaps much longer than we need to figure out if we got a chance at some option or not. Okay. I mean, it could, it could be quite frankly a month, I think. Is that safe? Oh, so we could do a couple things. We could defer for a month. So that That's not good for these guys. I agree. We could ask for a formal review within a month. <laughs> so what do they do? If we pass a resolution authorizing the special use permit, and then with, with a caveat that we want to review the, the, our opportunity to affect change to the signage contract, I guess they they can keep running because if we can't affect the change, I guess they're going to be allowed to keep running. We. Adam can chime in on this. I suspect one thing we could do is require the billboards to be removed unless they can demonstrate to us that they have the inability to do that within 30 days or 60 days. Or, or we find, I believe, the tenants are willing. They, they had, and I'm speaking for them and I shouldn't, but there was really no resistance to removing those billboards. There, there's not a lot of value to, well, in my opinion, there's not a lot of value to the owner or particularly the business. Um, so we had a willing <clears throat> tenant. The difficulty is the lease. And I suspect you're going to get objection at the... I just asked one question. There's value to them if they buy the property. If the tenant buys the property, then there's value. Limited. It's, it's Well, assuming the contract's written so that it's... Adaptable to new owners because we don't know if it transfers. That's part of the evaluation. I, I don't think this is the spot to try and solve for the council to try and interpret what that 
contract may say or may not say and what abilities, again, we have not had the opportunity to really dig into potential options there for trying to find a way to get the billboards to go away. Would, would, uh, can I interrupt you? Would, would, the, would the action taken against the billboard company, would the city initiate an action or would the Can't. owner initiate an action? I mean, are we, we so we're, we're going to provide counsel to the owner of the property on what he should do? No, we're going to tell the owner of the property that the condition says that the billboard needs to be removed and the city will assist as much as we can in helping him inform Lamar as to why the billboards have to be removed because of current um, restrictions that are placed on the property. So we're going to give the property owner legal advice? No. Oh, we're giving, we'll, him, we're giving them a legal entity. Well, we're, no, we're, we'll assist in the sense of community development will work with, if, if the owner says, I need the language <laughs> of the actual zoning, the special use permit to send to the thing will you know will assist them to get them what they need we're not providing them legal counsel or anything like that we're simply telling them under the special use permit the signs need to be removed would the, uh, we would not talk to the city the attorney's office would not talk to lamar at all because the contract is not between the city and them the contract is between the owner so if the at the end of the day if the city believes that there's a legal way to get rid of these signs and yet the owner of the property and the billboard company don't believe that there is a legal way the city could cut the business down and jeopardize those five jobs because they didn't comply with the condition, correct? I think that's accurate. Okay. Whether they would choose to do that to the council. They're not coming. Okay, I, I don't... All right. Uh, Alderman Bates. Thank you. Would it be good to put in an amendment to have some sort of time frame in there? With, I mean, you talk about you're going to report back, or is that something that we could just put in the the council has requested a update within? I think you could do it either way. Either way, if you as the council. Either if you put it in the motion or you put it in the minutes that you want to hear back within 30 or 60 days as to what the conclusion was relative to the billboards, either way we're... I would recommend if you want it to be a contingency, if you want it to be that if in 30 days it doesn't happen, that this never happened, to put it into the, into the actual motion itself. Um, can I make that a friendly motion amendment? You want me to just... I will make an I will make an amendment to um, uh, Adam if you want to rephrase that. <laughs> no, no. You want to depends what they want. You want to report in thirty days of the likelihood, or you want it to be done in thirty? Uh, a report. This one. I'm uh. So I think you can just amend it to say uh, move the same language um, provided a report is given to council um, within 30 days or within two council meetings, however, whatever you want. Two council meetings. I'll second it. A motion and a second to amend the motion. But the timeline for correct? Director Hayes. So just so I'm clear, I believe the understanding, the effect of that motion, I'm sorry, assuming it passes, would be that we at the staff level would have some, so either we're going to have a solution that allows, us, allows those removal, the billboards to be removed, either at at some point in the near future, or maybe at, at least a date certain, or we're not. Right. And part of that is sometimes we have things where we have a purchase agreement for a property, and, and a few months later I find out we never purchased it, and that's one of those things that it, it's nice to know what's the closure of this, especially with something that's hanging like this. Anyone else? Alderman Stevenson. I do. It doesn't work. So um, my understanding is... 
my, my original thought of putting some timeline in was quite honestly for the removal of the billboards because I'm assuming if the special use permit passes, the operation of the billboards is no longer a legal opportunity within our special use permit. No, because the billboards are grandfathered in as long as they don't get changed. Well, but there is no special use permit existing. So we're implying we're putting in a special use permit that would, does not require that does not allow that utilization. I I assume that by us creating the special use permit, we're saying that that dear owner who is asking us for the special use permit, you also have a differing use on the property, which is a billboard. If you want the special <clears throat> use permit, we'll grant that, but you got to take the billboards down. Right. That that's what's out there. And the, so the, there is no requirement. My suggestion, my where I was headed with a suggestion, the timeline is to report back in thirty days the status of the billboards and they're, when they're coming down, <laughs> because they got to come down under the use. Assumably, unless there's this assumed uh, grandfather. This <laughs> that. Well, just to, just to give you an example of what in discussing with Brad. Um, what a possible remedy would be. There are currently people renting the billboards, obviously. So those rents, let's say, are six months. So there's a possible, whatever, whatever the, however long they have it for, um, the, the, there could be some sort of agreement between the owner um, and Lamar if the city agrees to allow them to stay for, let's say, the six months so that no one loses the money that they've already paid. Or, you know what I mean? That was the thought. Um, but that, that was just what Brad and I discussed. Okay. Um, Alderman Erickson. Thank you, Mayor. The billboards are paper billboards. Those are 30-day contracts. She said they're paper billboards and they're 30-day contracts. They're not permanent. How do you know that? Is there, if they're paper, is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? They're yeah, not permanent. I, well, none of them are permanent. I don't know what the lease arrangement Those was. Those are part of a showing. Uh, I'm familiar with billboards in this area. That's part of a showing. Those are There are two sets of billboards. There are permanent billboards and um, paper billboards. Are, those are part that are 30 days. These are changeable. So then it's right. 30 mm -hmm. days. So they change every 30 days. Those billboards are changing. Yes. And they do change every 30 days. They're, Use them. Mm -hmm. they are changeable for a contract. Right. I was just saying, like, Tom's, I think, we Googled Earth, Google Maps it, and Tom's drive-in was one of the mm -hmm. things. And so I was just saying, if Tom's said, we're going to pay for six months' worth of meh, and they paid for six months' worth, then... We, you, that's what I, I wasn't saying. How long each contract is between Lamar and the person? I just that was just an example. I don't know how long. The All right. So there is a motion to put a timeline for a report back to the council within the uh, thirty days. Um, that's the first motion. So. We'll vote on that amendment to the uh, original motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Or we'll vote aye. All opposed, we'll vote no using the roll call machine, please. Motion to put the timeline for a report back passes 6 to 0. That's now part of the, the motion. So the motion is to approve the special use permit with all the conditions. And I guess my reading is that they have to remove the off-premise signs. Just me. Um, Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I just. 
So I mean, we don't know. We're speculating in that. But yeah, I mean, some of these sign companies, you can get out of the contract, but you have to buy it out. The owner, the owner may have to may have to put up thousands of dollars to the sign company because they have an investment. You did mention that this contract in 2025 sounds like there could be an opportunity to, for some legal re remedy in 2025 when the contract ends. No, I, th I think there could be a legal remedy well, now. I was getting there. Yeah, getting there. But, but Mr. Speaks isn't our client. We, I mean, and if I, I can probably get two other attorneys to give you two other opinions. So. <laughs> Um, but I just think that it's convoluted a little bit here on what we're doing with this now. Um, so I would, I, I just would, know how hard that is. It is to, this, I think the state came up with some law for billboards on highways, mm -hmm. change the municipal boundary, correct? Something like that. But, um, so, but like I said, I'm happy we're looking at it. I just, I don't want to put this business in jeopardy of getting started and then having to stop or uncertainty. They're willing to put a substantial investment in our community. They're going to bring five jobs, you know, to the community. And if I was in that shoe, I'd go, well, I'm not quite sure if I want to put the investment up here. I don't know what's going to happen in months, in a month or six months. And so I don't think it's fair to put them in that predicament. So that's my hesitation. Question or you? I'm a director Hayes, go ahead. Yeah, it's just I, so I'm clear. I I understand the concern, Mayor, and it the intent of staff is the, via the recommendation to allow the use to move forward. The hope is that the billboards could be removed and therefore a condition. It was not our intent, nor is it our intent, that if the billboards are deemed unable to be removed or it's unreasonable. Let's say the you know that the property owner is required to reimburse the cost of those billboards at whatever they may cost. <clears throat> Staff's position is that it would we would then recommend waiving of that requirement, but that the special use permit and the business be allowed to continue. The difficulty we have here, Alderman Bates had suggested waiting. I. I like Alderman Stevenson, feel that that's a disservice to the business, particularly while we're investigating the ability, helping look at the feasibility of removing those billboards. My expectation would be in 30 days, we would be back here telling you, we have found a way and here's how that's going to happen. Or we have been able, to un we have been unable to find a way to reasonably require those billboards to be removed and therefore recommending removal amendment recommending amendment of the special use permit to remove that that requirement from the permit okay. can, I, can i get an opinion from our uh, from adam Ad, maybe he can't give it but you, i had heard i'd like to know is the use of these billboards in a special use environment permitted? I don't understand the question. Is the is the is the operation of the billboards within a special use permitted site a viable use a, a viable operation? My understanding is that where this property is located, the zoning doesn't allow for billboards. Because these billboards were created before the, that went in into effect, the billboards were grandfathered in. So these billboards are allowed to be there, regardless of what it's okay, so, special use because of the zoning. So it's not the special use that's driving the, the leverage that we're seeking. It's the, what we're attempting to connect it to us, which is even more common. We're, they were allowed, allowed use when the billboards were agreed to be put in and we changed our ordinances so now the use would no longer be allowed if they got if they got knocked down in the storm correct yeah, we really should have we really should have cleaned this up I mean, this, they're going to be there <laughs> so any attempt to leverage it is kind of wasted okay well i think that's what this does it does give them 
30 days of time to uh, look into this. Um, I would caution that what we believe somewhat subjective or reasonable. I mean, if, it, if we believe that $10,000 is reasonable, the owner of the property might not believe $10,000, but it, it gives a, a little bit of time to look into this and that's okay. So I guess at the end of the day, I'm okay with giving them that time. And we'd also heard from the director on the intentions of the department. Uh, if we can't do what we're asking them to be able to do. So we'll see what happens. Okay. All in favor of the motion as amended will vote aye. All opposed will vote no using the roll call machine. That motion passes five to one. Um. Can, I, can, I do, Go ahead. can I just ask a question? So uh, I voted for this because I think there's benefit in having a business in there, and I agree that a business that doesn't know if it's going to be able to continue to function, isn't good, they're not going to want to do that. So I get that. And but the billboards are an eyesore. And is there a way to change, is there a way to to put in an ordinance that would cease to allow a continuous grandfathering in of something that happened many, many years ago that we no longer want. So in theory, that's what this ordinance does. This ordinance says that you can only have general upkeep. You can't, you can't fix it. Let's say a bar were to break on the thing. You can't install a new support bar mm -hmm. into that. So sooner or later they will fall down. But, but My they've been up there for a long, long time without falling down. Correct. Apparently, they were well constructed. You're, you're, and I believe you're allowed to do general maintenance. So you take a look at the billboards next to Cranky Pat sometime. Take a look at the back of them. Mm -hmm. They're iffy. These billboards are modern and pretty solid. It's going to take a lot for these to go away. Mm -hmm. um, so they vary. Highway 41, you probably still see some that are the old wood ones, right, that the right windstorm, they're going to go away. Um, yeah, it, it all depends. It's going to be a while. The option, there is an option for the city to actually, you know, you can utilize eminent domain and acquire them and pay for them. We haven't chose to do that. I don't know that I would recommend that, Not perhaps not in this case, but at least not at this point, but that that's an option as well. So we we have taken probably as much measure as we can to try and get them removed, although it's going to be a long time. Ready. Um, the item number six is a public forum. Anyone here who would like to speak to the council on any issue, the public forum? I don't think so. So. Is one here tonight who would like to speak, so I will close the public forum. We'll move on to item number eight, the consent agenda. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Move to approve. Second. second. There's a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Alderman Bates. Press the wrong button. Okay. Any comments? Seeing none, all in, um, is there a unanimous consent to approve the consent agenda? Is there any objection? Seeing no objection, that's so ordered. Reports of standing committees, uh, the Public Services and Safety Committee, uh, Chairman Bates. Reporting out from the June 25th meeting, the committee recommends council amend the capital improvement program to purchase and install pedestrian beacons on Tuller Road at Bird Avenue in the amount of $15,000, of which $6,000 is funded by the uh, Nina Joint School District, and $9,000 will be funded by the Community Development Block Grant Funds, and I would so move. Second. There's a motion 
In a second, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, vote aye. All opposed, vote no using the roll call. That motion passes six to zero. Uh, moving on to the July 9th meeting, the committee recommends council approve policy 2018-01 to include section C wording as follows uh, with code section 4-106, abandonment of premises, and code section 4-97, parent A, as to ownership, and I would so move. Second. Alderman Bates moves, seconded by Alderman Spellman. Many policy 2018-01. Any comments or questions? All in favor will vote aye. All opposed vote no using the roll call machine. Motion passes six to zero. Committee recommends council deny the new beverage operator license application for Cody R. Lichtfuss, and I would so move. Alderman Bates moves, Second. seconded by Alderman Lang. Comments or questions on this item? All in favor, vote aye. All opposed, vote no using the roll call machine. That motion passes six to zero. Committee recommends council approve the official mm -hmm. traffic maps that they be, me, be amended to remove the no parking anytime regulation on the south side of East Forest Avenue from 3rd Street to 4th Street and to establish a no parking anytime regulation on the north side of East Forest Avenue from 3rd Street to 4th Street. And I would so move. Second. Alderman Bates moves, seconded by Alderman Spellman. Comments, questions, Alderman Steele. So I'm the only council person here from the first district where the situation is. Um, and I was at a meeting with the residents in that of that block. And the problem here is that there is an elderly couple who lives on the north side of the street who have a single wide driveway and two cars. And that means when they have to get their cars in and out around each other, they can no longer, if this goes into effect, they can no longer park one car in front of their house. And the, and the woman who lives there also likes to be able to drive into her driveway, move her groceries into the car, I mean, at the house from the car, and then go back and park on the street. And this seems like a minor thing. But in the meeting we had with the residents, the people on the south side had no objection to continuing to have their side be the no parking side. And even just for half a block, so this one couple can be able to move their cars. And they are elderly. And I really would like to not make this woman have to walk across the street with her groceries on icy streets in the middle of winter and up over the the um, strip of of, uh, of grass or snow um, during the winter. I think we are a small community. We can have that kind of flexibility. This is not going to be a perpetual issue. This is going to be an issue for as long as that couple lives in that house, and they are elderly. So I, I am going to vote against this. I think we could make this, we could have, what, what we had decided in the meeting was that we would suggest that there be parking on the south side of the street on the east end, but parking on the north side of the street on the west end to accommodate this one household. I don't think that's a huge thing to ask, um, and I think it would accommodate the needs of the people who live there now. It's not going to be a be change. Thank you. Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. We did discuss cutting the block in half, and what the committee was concerned about was it's an unusual thing to cut a block in half and to have parking on one side and then not parking on the other, because what we were trying to do is get a straight shot through that the uh, intersection with the stop signs and being able to see around corners, because it is, it is abutting a school. 
Um, the other thing I will mention is the one um, resident who did attend our meeting uh, said she she you know would like it on her side, but she says she was okay with it on the other side. I don't believe it's the same person that you're talking about, but no one else showed up to our meeting. And oh, it is the same person. So if it was the same person, then she said she she wasn't that concerned about it okay. at this time. Okay, that that is different than I had heard of meaning. Anyone else? <clears throat> All in favor will vote aye. All opposed will vote no using the roll call machine. That motion passes five to one. And that concludes my report. <clears throat> Thank you for your report. There is no report from the Finance and Personnel Committee of June 24th. Um, there is for the meeting of July 8th, 2019, Chairman Erickson. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting out from the meeting of July 8th, um, the Finance and Personnel Committee meeting. Um, the minutes can be found on the city website. Item number one, the committee recommends council committee recommends the committee recommends council um, approve the policy. I'm sorry, this is the committee recommends council committee recommends council approve policy 2019-01 uh, social media. This seems awkward to me. Council the committee recommends the council uh, approve yeah. policy 2019-01. Yeah. Okay. Alderman Erickson moves that. <laughs> is there is there a second? Second. Is a second by Alderman Steele <coughs> to approve the 2019-01 social media policy. Comments or questions? Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. While we had the meeting, it was very informative, and I just wanted uh, the other aldermen to understand that a lot of this has to do with your own personal uh, alderman um, social media and what you keep and don't keep and how you can't block people, things like that. So it, it's it's a good thing to read through. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? If not, all in favor of the new 2000, policy 2019-01 regarding social media, vote aye, all opposed, vote no. That motion passes six to zero. Item number two, the committee recommends council approve policy 2019-02 anti-bullying. And I move, so move. Alderman Erickson moves, seconded by Alderman Stevenson. Okay. Policy number 2019-02 regarding anti-bullying. Discussion. Seeing none. All in favor, vote aye. All opposed, vote no. In the roll call machine. <coughs> that motion also passes six to zero. Thank I did, you. I, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Item number three, the committee recommends council adopt resolution number 2019-17, amending the fee schedule of the city of Nina to provide for a $50 late fee for any retail liquor license renewal and or associated cigarette slash amusement license renewal not filed by the April 15th deadline to change the June 30th deadline for license payment and issuance from June 30th to June 15th and establish a $20 a day late fee for license payments made after the June 15th deadline. And I so move. There's a motion by Alderman Erickson. Second. Seconded by Alderman Steele. Any discussion? Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. Is there still a June 30th serious deadline that the state won't go beyond that? Okay. The only comment or question I have is there's many business owners in this community who have been doing it the same way for 30 years. I want to make sure that we... That I have enough confidence in the clerk's office because I see how they do um, 
reach out to our business owners, but got to make sure they know about it. Because I guarantee you, none of them are watching this tonight or reading the minutes from the meeting. So, probably. <laughs> that my wife. Um, but uh, they got to know that we moved it up to mm -hmm. June 15. Because I'll be honest, there is quite a few of them who wait till the deadline. Right. And, and so, um, sure that we'll take steps to educate them and make sure that they know about the change. Okay. Because Eddie and I are going to get. <laughs> all right. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, vote aye. All opposed, vote no using the roll call machine, please. That motion also passes six to zero. That concludes your report. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. And thank you for uh, Adam and uh, Lindsay just left for working on the two uh, policy changes. You know, they both put in time and kind of worked together on that. So I want to thank them for doing that. Um, we will then move on to... Reports of special committees and liaisons or special project committees. Um, there is no, was no plan commission canceled uh, July 9th. There's no report for the plan commission. The item number C, Board of Public Works meeting of June 25th, 2019, Vice Chairman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. There are several information only items. The board approved pay estimate number three for contract 1-19, miscellaneous sewer and water main construction and street construction on Caroline Street, Stephen Street, and Fifth Street to Carl Bowers and Son Construction, incorporated in Kalkana in the amount of $108,477.99. The board also approved pay estimate number three for contract 2-19, miscellaneous sewer and water main construction and street construction on Stanley Street, Stanley Court, and Thomas Court to Robert J. Immel Excavating Incorporated in Greenville in the amount of $237,583.13. The board proved pay estimate number four for Washington Park, phase three, to R&R Wash, Ripon, Wisconsin, in the amount of $131,953.13. The board approved change order number three for chemical storage and feed modification project to August Winter and Sons Incorporated in the amount of the change order came out with a negative $1,575. From the July 9th Board of Public Works meeting, another uh, set of informational only items. The board approved change order number one for Washington Park Phase 3 to R&R Wash Materials Incorporated, Ripon, in the amount of $4,246.26. The board approved pay, pay request number five for Washington Park Phase 3 to r, &R Wash Materials Ripon in the amount of $73,682.48. The board approved pay estimate number six to, uh, for chemical storage and feed modification project to August Winter and Sons Incorporated in the amount of $15,181. As a council action item, the board re recommends council approve final payment for contract 3-19 epoxy pavement marking to Brickline Incorporated, Madison, in the amount of $54,214.50. And I would so move. There's a move by Alderman Bates. Is there a second? Second. Alderman Stevenson seconds. Any discussion on the pavement marking final payment? Seeing none, all in favor vote aye. All opposed vote no using the roll call machine. That motion passes six to zero. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. I just just one I just want a clarification on the first uh, Board of Public Works. Item number C was pay request number four. Oh just so folks. Sorry. Um, I think you just all the rest are <clears throat> number three. So not a big deal, but I just for the record want to make sure that we recognize that it's pay request number four, not number three. Um so that thank you for your reports. Item number E is the Landmarks Commission report, Alder Person Lane. Thank you, Mayor. The Landmarks Commission met on July 9th. We discussed and sort of did a recap of the Doty Island Family Day and the walking tours that were provided by the Landmarks Commission that featured 
some of the amazing historic properties on Doty Island. We also discussed and approved sponsorship of the Voyager Canoe Rides for the fourth annual powwow that will be held on September 21st from noon to 4. We also discussed the Landmark Commission's bylaws and property permit reviews. And that concluded our meeting. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, there is no report from the Sustainable NIDA Committee tonight, I believe, but I would like to note that there is a couple openings on the um, Sustainable NIDA Committee, so if someone knows um, that I have to fill a couple positions. Um, neighborhood Groups, the Business Improvement District Board, the Bid Board, that's also all. all in place. Thank you, Mayor. The Bid Board met on July 16th, yesterday. We reviewed the financial re uh, review that was done for the bid for 2018 by Baker Tilly. We discussed um, follow-up to the 10 items that were brought up at the co-op partnership meeting. We, uh, it was brought up that there are new tenants in Keller Plaza, which was um, a happy announcement. Also, there is uh, new management in the ERA ballroom, so taking over... Um, that business, but keeping it as a ballroom. So that was good news also. Future Nina discussed its Nina Artworks project, the decoration of manhole cover artwork. So look into that on Future Nina's website if you haven't already heard about that or seen that. Also, the bid um, sponsored uh, two traffic box wraps, which are now in place and feature historic photos of Nina, and those are on the corner of Church and Wisconsin. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Questions or anything? Uh, Berkstrom Mahler Museum, Alder Person Spellman. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Bergstrom Mahler Museum Board last met on July 1st. Uh, some upcoming uh, activities are the Arts Festival, which is held on Sunday, July 21st, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Riverside Park. There will be raffles, children's activities, food vendors, and 65 artists that are featured. The next board meeting is on August 28th, and that concludes my report. Thank you. I apologize, I had uh so this Sunday is the the event at Riverside Park that'll bring thousands of people into the park. So mm -hmm. it's always a fun time. Hopefully the weather will get a little bit cooler than it is right now by Sunday. Um, thank you for your report. The CDA authority, is there any report, Director Hayes? Just very briefly, the CDA continues to work uh, on downtown projects and uh, they continue to move forward. I'm hoping that we would have something for council review uh, in late summer, early fall. We are also continuing with the help of the city attorney's office to work towards the closing of Lauren Salvage Yard. Um, has had some hurdles, but we're working through those. So we're hoping to get that done here in the near future as well. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Library board report all person Erickson thank you mayor the library board met today at four o'clock and I'm pleased to report that the summer youth program is off to a great start there are a lot of um, youth signups um, the bookmobile has been out and about in the community and that has gone over very very well and I'd like to let everyone know that the last um, youth um, lunch program lunch is going to be tomorrow. Um, so um, that program has gone over very well. The library has executed that very, very well. And that concludes my report. Thank you. They're averaging over 120 some lunches That's a correct. day, as I understand. Mm -hmm. And Mayor, um, I think um, school district announced that whole summer school, the elementary schools is closed tomorrow. Was that right? And the, free right. and the free lunches aren't going to be offered, so the only free lunches tomorrow will be at the... That is correct. The free lunches that are held at the elementary schools will not be at the elementary schools. The only free lunch will be available at the library tomorrow. So the library has ordered a few more to anticipate that additional demand. Hey, thank you very much for your report. Mm -hmm. And lastly, uh, also from Alderperson Erickson, a report from the Neen Arts Council. <laughs> 
Thank you, Mayor. The Nina Arts Council met on July 10th, and I'm pleased to report that in conjunction with the Berkshire Mahler Museum of Glass Art Festival, we will have Nina Paints the Town. Um, if you remember last September, we had that event and the weather didn't cooperate that well, so we are doing it again. It is going to be held by the Youth Art Tent, so if you're interested in plein air art, you can come and get free supplies, which would include um, a board, paper, um, watercolors, or pastels to do your plein air art, which is painting or drawing on site. So I encourage you to visit that. Um, and we have another event that's coming up on October 3rd. This is in the planning stages. It's called Nina Rocks, where we're having a community-wide music event. And you'll be hearing more about that as we get closer to that. And that concludes my uh, report. Thanks for your, your report. Thanks for what you guys do on the Nina Arts Council. There are just a lot of good things going on from people in the community. They appreciate it. Um, Presentation, there are no petitions. Any council directors anyone would like to look at? None. Thank you. Uh, any unfinished business by anyone? Unfinished business? Uh, under new business, item number 14, um, just uh, announced uh, Mayor Crawford's appointment to fill the unexpired term of Michael Hopkins, who resigned from the Nina Arts Council term. This term will expire April 2020. This will be considered at the next August 7th meeting. So folks that view this um, uh, presentation here on, on TV and Spectrum or whatever, uh, we will uh, be looking for someone to uh, be on the Nina Arts Council. Uh, and if you're interested, make sure you get a hold of us. Um, the League of Wisconsin Mis Municipalities Conference will be held on October 23rd through October 25th at the KI Center in Green Bay. So early bird registration will close uh, September 13th. City clerk makes all your reservations. So it is close enough in Green Bay. So if you're interested in going, talk to the clerk. Um, it's a great place to network. They've got a lot of good seminars and that and good place to find out pertinent information about what's happened in municipalities. And Jim, and is it just Jim and Jerry? Jerry, are you part of that, doing the presentation up there for TARF? Um, I believe Jim is actually one of the presenters. One of the topics is going to be the transportation assessment replacement up there. So that's happening, too. I think Jerry has been a great resource to help, Jim. <laughs> Jerry, you're busy on October 23rd now. I like to know and to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Um, so that's that. And then under any announcements or questions that may legally come, so this is a point for announcements. I have a couple, but we will go to Alderman Bates first. Yes, thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, what opportunities do people have if the heat index is dangerously high? Well, that's one of the things I've got on my list here. So. I'm opening it <laughs> for you. you. Go for you. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to hear this in time, but I, I wanted to tell the council at least. <laughs> I think tomorrow Joni's going to put something on the website. I don't think it got on there today if anyone saw it. But tomorrow something's going to go on the website and Facebook. Uh, if there are people out there, elderly or anything, that don't have air conditioning in that, and if it does get too hot uh, on the weekend, we are opening this room up to anyone who would like to come in and cool off if they need to get out of their apartment or their home and just hang out. We're willing to let them hang out here. Or they uh, could visit the library. Or, uh, you guys are like reading my mind. Or uh, the library is always open, and I know um, Gretchen, you know, they'd be accommodating too. So public facilities, we have the library, city hall here, and um, um, firemen told me we can't open up any fire <laughs> hydrants or anything like they do in Milwaukee. But uh, So those two are here, and something will be on Facebook in that regard. So thank you for that question, and um, something will be on there tomorrow and as i said check on your neighbors yeah good that's a great point so yeah in these high humidity temperatures make sure you check on your neighbor that'd be a great thing and i know today listening to uh nina Manasha fire and gold cross they had already quite a few heat related calls that they were going on medical calls heat related so uh it's gonna get worse so friday i friday i have a 
a wedding in Milwaukee outside Ooh. in the third ward. So that's wow. going to be real awesome. toasty. The wedding's outside and the other stuff is inside. So um, I'm going to ask Jerry just because I've got a couple of people who've asked and I've got some constituents who've asked and also an alderman or two, just to explain uh, what's going on on Teller Road. So that's kind of a lot of orange phones and barrels. And now signage is also up that Green Bay Road will be closed. Um, these are not full-blown constructions. So we, we didn't not, we don't notify the property owners like we normally do when they're going to be shut down for a long time. So um, a few of the business owners have just asked about timing and that. So, Jerry, can you just give, give a short synopsis so that when this is on TV, people will know? Sure, sure. Uh, Teller Road, let's start there. That is a pavement patching project. Um, they're doing full panel, partial panel replacements, some uh, joint repairs. Uh, at this point, they have worked through the northbound traffic lane, um, and we're really focusing on the travel lanes, not the parking lanes, so much with this work. Um, they will be switching over next week to work on the southbound travel lanes. Uh, so they'll be pulling concrete out and and placing new panels uh, in that area, along with some spot sidewalk replacement along that whole mile stretch. Um, this is um, being funded through the uh, miscellaneous pavement repair budget. So this is part of our contract uh, 418 with uh, Summers Construction. Um, work all together after they get the southbound lane done, then they've got some spot stuff to do along the center line around manholes. Uh, so they're probably another three weeks or so of work out there. And, uh, but it's scheduled to be done well in time for school to start. Um, it kind of dovetails in with a um, budget request for next year to diamond grind that stretch of Teller Road. So after the patching's done, um, we would intend to come through next year with uh, a diamond grinding machine and, and basically smooth the surface out for driving, um, similar to what we've done on a couple other projects around town. The uh, Green Bay Road closure starts uh, next Monday. That's related to the Courtney Court Reconstruction Project. It's a joint project that's being led by the town and Nina. Um, on Monday, they'll shut down Green Bay Road right at Courtney Court. So all of the driveways um, feeding off of Green Bay Road will still be accessible. Um, it's just that uh, the Crank Bicycle Shop has the first driveway north of the closure. So anybody going to Crank will have to come from Main Street or from the north. Uh, Pack Air is the first driveway south of the closure. Uh, I have emailed their um, folks and uh, just to let them know that shipping and receiving will all have to come from the south to get to their place. Uh, we have a storm sewer to extend that runs from basically the west side of the road all the way into Courtney Court. Um, they will be opening the road up Monday, uh, getting that pipe in. We'll be backfilling it with um, a slurry so that they can get back on there with the final pavement. And they will pour the... They'll be excavating the road on Monday, not opening the road, right? They'll be excavating in the road, yes. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, backfilling with slurry, and then they'll get the uh, the final pavement patch in right away so we should have it open wednesday for traffic and then we don't have to be back out in green bay road again for the rest of the project thank you for that oh, so it's two day closure it'll end up being a two-day closure yes <clears throat> so if someone asks you so i just want because you those are two major you know, streets within the city well let me just clarify that they'll be pouring the final pavement patch on tuesday um it'll be a high early strength concrete so uh, they'll be opening it up wednesday so it'll probably be after uh, the commute wednesday morning that they'll be able to open it up okay thank you very much jerry um other uh, comments by me uh, very quickly um i just want to thank uh, the park and rec uh, and uh and public works for all the hard work uh, Mike Kading, the entire parks crew, Trevor Fink, 
uh, Community Fest uh, really went off very, very well again this year. We had a little bit, it was a it was hot, hot day, a little shower midway, but um, it went off really good. Lots of great comments once again. Lots of people in the park. Um, a very, in my opinion, um, we, you know, some people made a very good decision to move up the fireworks a little bit. Um, Fire chief and Mike and myself and that, and it went. It was probably a good decision because there was an impending storm that could possibly hit with forty mile an hour winds. Everybody was happy, uh, and it was great for that. So that that was something that I just wanted to say once again. We hit it out of the park on that. So and then lastly, um, for people at home, uh, Riverside players and that have great performances at Riverside Park. Uh, we just got done with, with one recently finished. We have a musical coming up, uh, Clue, called Clue, and who hasn't played Clue when they were a kid, right? Um, it's a musical called Clue. It's going to run at Riverside Park from July 25th to the 28th and July 31st to August 4th. And they have a very cool director of this musical. He's sitting right to my left. Ooh. He's going to be the director of this performance. Uh, and so if you're at home, you know, get your tickets. Seniors, I believe, are like $13, uh, uh, and adults, uh, maybe 15 But it's a really nice night out, and it's a lot of fun. So <coughs> anyone who uh, has the opportunity to go see the musical Clue by Riverside Players, um, make sure you do that. So those are what I have. Is there anyone else who would like any other announcements? All right, seeing none. Move to adjourn. There's a motion by Alderman Stevenson. Second. Seconded by Alderman Erickson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. We are adjourned. Thank you all very, very much. I'm packing up my. Broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council meetings, City Committee meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents via the City website, www.ninagov.org. Nina residents can express their opinions about City issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the Mayor's office, contacting their City Alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the City website www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback.